Oh my god. <laughs> That is crazy. This has got to be one of the quickest and easiest ways to perform an oil change with one of these guys. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Now, this is not the traditional way of changing your oil, but boy, is it ever fast, clean, and dare I say, fun to do? Ever since I discovered this, it has become my go-to method. Now, before we get started, I just wanna quickly thank our video sponsor, Motomaster, found exclusively at Canadian Tire. Here, I have a Motomaster six and a half liter fluids extractor, a couple jugs of Motomaster's full synthetic lineup of oils developed with shell technology, and a Motomaster OE Plus canister filter. OE Plus is a sub-brand of Motomaster intended to perform better than original equipment. And along with some towels and funnels that I already have, that's all I really need to do this job. Now, a quick disclaimer that what I'm doing in this video is for entertainment and demonstration purposes only. The views and opinions expressed here are of my own and not of Canadian Tire or Motomaster. If you follow what I do in this video, you do it at your own risk. I will not be liable for any damages or losses that occur to you, your car, or anyone or anything else involved. All right, let's get into it. Now, just to be extremely clear, we have the traditional method of removing your oil, and then we have the extraction method of removing your oil. I'm gonna explain both of them to you, as well as go over the benefits and drawbacks of both. If you wanna skip the nerd stuff and go right to the oil change, head over to this timestamp. Let's start with the traditional method. In the traditional method, you remove the engine's oil by removing the engine's drain plug. The drain plug sits at the bottom of the engine, where the oil pan is. It is the lowest spot of the engine, and by removing this, you should be theoretically removing 100% of the oil that sits in your oil drain pan. Now, as far as benefits go, we just went over it. You theoretically remove 100% of the oil that sits in your drain pan. And if your drain bolt has a magnet on it, and I think most of them do, you can inspect the drain bolt for any large metal shavings that have broken off of your engine. However, there is quite some labor involved in this process. For most cars, you're gonna need to lift the vehicle in order to access this drain bolt. So what this means is that adequate space and the proper tools are necessary to get this job done. And because most people don't have the necessary tools to do the job, they simply just don't bother. And what tools are we talking about? Things like a jack and jack stands. It also tends to get messy no matter how careful you are. You have warm oil running out of your engine at high speeds, and oil somehow always tends to miss the catch can. Now let's go into the extraction method. The extraction method is done by removing the oil out of your engine's dipstick tube. Once you have your hose down the dipstick tube, you would pump your extraction unit, and it should be sucking all of the oil out into the reservoir. After no more oil comes out, then you are done. There's no need to remove the drain bolt in this method. In regards to the benefits of this method, it is the easiest method to remove your oil. There's barely any setup that's required. And this is especially important if you have an overpacked garage or if you live in a condo with tiny parking spaces. There's no need to worry about accessing the drain bolt because oil comes out from the top. And because you're not touching the drain bolt, there's no risk of over tightening and then stripping the drain bolt when you're done. Nothing is worse than the feeling of stripping a bolt, especially if it's your drain bolt. That just opens a whole can of worms. It's also the cleanest method of doing an oil change because after you're done, you just take the hose out, wipe it down, and you're good to go. However, there are its limitations. The first limitation is that it may not extract all of the oil from the oil pan. But I do have a few remedies for this to try and get most of the oil out. More on that later. Another limitation is that you don't get to inspect the drain bolt or the very bottom of the oil pan for any metal shavings. And finally, if your oil filter is not located at the top of your engine, like my FJ is, then your oil filter probably sits somewhere on the side or on the bottom of your engine, in which case you will still need to jack up the car in order to change that. Okay, now with all of that out of the way, knowing the benefits and the limitations of both, I opt to use the extraction method to do most of my routine oil changes. And maybe once in a while, I'll go down and remove the drain bolt to see if there's any metal shavings that I've collected at the bolt. It's fast, easy, it's clean, and it's actually pretty fun to do. Like, as weird as it sounds, I actually look forward to doing oil changes with this method. Now, I am aware that by using the extraction method, that may not extract all of the oil from the oil pan. But, I mean, if I can remove about 95% of the oil, 
I'm happy. You're never gonna be able to get 100% of the oil out of your engine anyways. Now, some people have also mentioned that by doing the extraction method, you won't be removing the sludge that builds up at the bottom of the engine. But when you perform an oil change, you're gonna be running the engine to warm up the oil. And what happens when you run the engine? It will homogenize everything that's in your engine. So, I mean, I don't see why this is really a problem. Anyways, let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how to use this method. And when we are done, I'm gonna remove the drain bolt at the bottom just to show you how much oil was left unextracted. Then you guys can decide if this is a method that you guys wanna try. All right, so step one, you wanna make sure you park your car in a level surface before you perform your oil change. This ensures that the oil is evenly distributed on the oil pan. Now, normally I would drive the car all the way into the garage, but because the rooftop tent is currently installed on the machine, it is too tall and I cannot get it in here, so this is gonna have to do. Step two, you wanna warm up your engine oil. This makes the oil less thick and more like the consistency of water. It's just like a jar of honey sitting at room temperature. It's thick and it takes a long time to get out. Every car's owner manual should have some direction on how you warm up your oil before an oil change. So the FJ's been sitting here overnight and so I'm gonna run the engine for about three, four, five minutes, and that should get the oil decently warm. If you've been driving this thing all day and just parked it, I'd say maybe wait a couple hours before you perform an oil change because the oil is pretty darn hot at that point. So once you're done that, you're gonna pop the hood and we're gonna move on to step three. So step three, now we're gonna remove the oil. I'm gonna quickly explain to you how to put this unit together. It's pretty simple. There's the reservoir that has a pump. There's a main hose that attaches to the reservoir. And then there's the smaller hose and we attach it to the main hose. This unit also comes with a different style hosing and this can be used for removing fluid from your differential or transfer case. Now we did have to make a small modification to this hosing because it didn't reach the bottom of the oil pan. So what I did was I went to a hardware store and got more hosing and extended it so that it could reach the bottom and drain out as much oil as possible. If you are to extend the hose by yourself, make sure the extension is long enough that you are never completely inserting the entire extension into the dipstick hole. This is extremely important. This prevents any risk of losing your extension inside your engine when you try to pull out the hose when you are done. This is why my extension is over double the length. Now, Motomaster does have another unit that is larger that comes with longer hosing. I just have the six and a half liter model that uh, comes with the hose that's a little bit shorter. All right, so once we have this set up, let's move on to the engine bay. So we're gonna first locate our engine's oil fill cap. And on the Toyota FJ Cruiser, it sits right here. And we're just gonna give that a nice turn and we're gonna open it to let some air flow into the engine while we extract it. And the oil cap conveniently tells you what oil this engine uses. Unless you have a specific reason to be using a different type of oil, I say just stick to what it says on the engine oil cap. And then we're gonna move on to the dipstick tube. So in the FJ Cruiser, the dipstick is located right here. So we're just gonna pull it out, give it a nice clean, and we're gonna set it aside. So a good reference point on how deep you wanna stick your hose is you can measure against the dipstick itself. So at the very least, you wanna put this much hosing into the dipstick tube. Okay, so we have the hole right here. We're just gonna feed the line in and that's about where the dipstick was at. So once you have that all inserted, you're gonna start pumping the unit and oil should start coming out of your suction hose. You wanna keep pumping until the pump gives you some resistance. And so I'm at that point right now, so I'm just gonna let it sit here for a bit. Just check it every once in a while to make sure that the pump is still giving you that pressure. So what do you guys think so far? Do you think the oil extractor is something that you guys would use? Let me know in the comments below. While we're waiting for this thing to fill up, I'm just gonna do a quick shout out to my coffee supporters. Coffee is like Patreon, but unlike Patreon, coffee does not take a cut of the transaction. A huge shout out to the No Don't Tear member, 
Cali Boy GX, who is the reason why Bigfoot is still hiding in the woods. Additional shout outs to our other supporters, Adrian, Jade, Wade, Jessica, Nathan, and Alex. You guys are incredible. If you wanna support me as well, go check this link above or in the description below. It is with your generous support that I can keep doing this. All right, let's get back into it. So when you start to hear your hose stutter and sound like this, that means you're probably at the end of the line. Now, what I do to try to remove the most oil is I try to jig it around a little bit to see if it catches again. So stick it in and out, turn it a bit, um, turn it counterclockwise and clockwise to see if you can catch any remaining fluid that is stuck there in the oil pan. So I'm just gonna give it a few more pumps. And as I'm pumping, I'm gonna move it in and out. Okay. So let's take out the tube. We're gonna stick it in this nice little reservoir here. Just for storage, we're gonna take this hook end and it hooks nicely on the edge of the handle over here. And that's it. This actually extracted more oil than I thought it would. Typically it goes and extracts up to about five liters, but it actually is reaching 5.5. So I am interested in seeing how much oil is left in the oil pan. Let's go check it out. So luckily the FJ is just lifted enough so that I can get underneath without having to jack it up and put jack stands on. But for 99% of the cars in this world, you're not gonna be able to do this. So I have a nice hole where I can access the drain plug from the skid plates here. And let's see what we got. Oh my God. <laughs> That's barely anything. That is crazy. <laughs> All right, well, that debunks that myth. So as this finishes dribbling, you know what we talked about earlier where there's a potential that you're not gonna get all the oil out of, uh, of the drain pan and you actually have to remove the drain plug to, uh, to theoretically extract 100% of it. Um, I was expecting more to come out of here, but it is, it is practically like, it, <laughs> it was just dribbling. It was, it was just dribbling. So this, yeah, at least from this trial, the oil extraction method up top is just as effective as taking out your drain bolt from the base. So now we gotta put the drain bolt back in. I'm gonna go in there, clean up the area a little bit. Um, there should be a new washer that you're gonna be replacing this with. And then what you're gonna wanna do after you get that hand tightened is you wanna torque it to spec and it should be in your FJ Cruiser maintenance manual. So I don't know if you can tell, the little bit of oil there collecting on the bottom of this, uh, this catch pan, that's how much oil was left in the oil pan. So, I mean, 100%, I would say that this method does just as much as pulling the drain plug. So that's step three done. Now we're gonna finish the oil change and what's left is the oil filter and then we're gonna add oil into it and that's it. Now before we get into that, we're gonna turn the dipstick into the tube. So with the FJ Cruiser's oil filter, it's a canister filter that sits right here. So it's a pretty convenient location. It's gonna give that a nice twist and that should start to loosen up. So once you have the oil filter loosened, there is a little bit of oil that is gonna come out of the filter. If you take a look, you'll see that there's a hole right here. I'm gonna place a catch can right underneath as I remove the oil filter and that should catch all of the stuff that dribbles out. All right, nice and easy. We're just gonna wipe out the excess oil here. And we're gonna take our catch can away. Okay, then we're gonna take our new filter, our new canister filter, the Motomaster OE Plus. And like I said earlier, the OE Plus brand is supposed to outperform original equipment. So before we screw this oil canister on, we're gonna be lubricating this rubber O-ring over here and creates a, helps create a nice seal on the filter. I'm just gonna dip my finger in there, give it a nice coating all around. Screw that on. And wipe off any excess oil. And there you have it, oil filter changed. All right, so the last step, step five, is to add oil back into the engine. We have our Motomaster full synthetic 5W30 oil that we'll be using in our engine. And this should be just as good as the market equivalents. It's developed with shell technology. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead. This is a five liter jug. So it's a good starting point. Just 
just gonna empty the entire jug in there. So I'm just gonna top it up with another 300 mils because I wanna match exactly how much fluid I extracted from the engine. Once you have your initial amount in the engine, you're gonna take your cap, you're gonna screw that back on tightly, and then you're gonna run your engine for approximately 30 seconds. Then you're gonna come back out and check the oil level on your dipstick. If it's not at the correct level, you're gonna add some more oil, run the engine again for 30 seconds, and check your dipstick. You're gonna keep doing this until the oil is sitting at the correct level on your dipstick. So first, you're gonna wipe off your dipstick. Then you're gonna stick it back in and pull it out. Then you should be able to get a good reading from here. So you wanna make sure the oil level is in between the two dots. The closer to the top, the better. Now, because I've put new oil in there, you can't really tell by the oil color because it's all translucent. And to be frank, the Toyota dipstick is not that effective. Dipsticks in other cars have a little hatching section so that you can tell where the oil comes up to. But I can see that the oil level is about sitting right here. So I'm just gonna leave it at that because it should be good. So we have our dipstick back in, we have our engine oil filled, we have the oil filter changed, and we didn't touch the drain bolt. And that's all there is to it to this method. I hope this video has helped you better understand the oil changing process, how to use the extractor, and has given you some insight on whether or not the fluids extractor is right for you. Now, initially, I didn't think the extractor was gonna remove all of the oil from the oil pan. But as you saw right here, it was able to remove 99.9999999% of the oil. So, I mean, you be the judge. It's a really impressive tool. I think this tool is a must have for professionals and beginners alike. Oh, and did I mention it was really fun to do? You'll be fighting over it like those Swiffer commercials. No, I want to sweep. No, I want to sweep. No, give it to me here. Anyways, thank you guys so much and a huge thanks to this video sponsor, Motomaster found exclusively at Canadian Tire. If you guys like what I do and you like my adventure videos, help support me by subscribing, liking, and leave me a comment. After seeing this demonstration and seeing how easy it is, would you get one for yourself? Or do you already have one of these? Let me know. I'll catch you guys in the next video.